Oh hey, today I'm going to be checking out the brakes on this old girl, so tag along and see how it goes. Now where's my new socket? So one of the issues with these uh, old Chevy trucks, these, these big C50 big axled trucks, is the wheels um, is really the biggest concern, first of all, is because they're split wheels and no one wants to change the tires on them. I mean, they're just 20 inch rims, so you can buy tires for them, but no one wants to get in there and change those wheels or change the tires on the wheel because they're afraid of that split rim. So I've got a decision to make of whether I'm keeping the axles in this truck or if I'm swapping them out for something else. So that's what I'm gonna try and do today is get the tires off of it. I had to go buy a bigger socket because believe it or not, I didn't have a socket for these lug nuts. I, anyways, uh, so I had to go buy a bigger socket. So I got that and I'm gonna try and get these wheels off and hopefully from what I can find at the online parts places on the interwebs is there's only one size of shoe available for the back axle. Um, so hopefully the ones that I have are the ones that they sell. And if that's the case, then, you know, that'll give me a little bit more indication of whether I'm going to bother switching out these axles or not. Um, because like I said, I'd really like to drive this thing and uh, get it on the road this summer. So one other thing that I'm just looking at now is the pinion on the back axle, and I'll show you in a minute. The pinion on the back axle is offset to the passenger side. Um, so I don't know if that's gonna cause me an issue or not. I hope not. I mean, I, I'm assuming that when these things were new, it was like that anyways. So, you know, the engine was sitting in the middle and, you know, you could get it with your choice of a couple inline sixes. Um, you could get a V6, which this truck actually had. This truck was a V6. There was a 305, 305 cubic inch V6. So that's a pretty massive V6. Um, so that's what this would have had in it uh, was some big transmission of some sort. You could get a small block Chevy. Uh, so like a 327. Uh, in this and uh, you could also get a big block I believe a 366 is what I saw for the list of engines on these um, I I always knew about the inline six I knew about the v6 I knew about the small block but I didn't know if in this year you could get that 366 big block or whatever in it um, but I guess I mean they were putting the big blocks in the cars 396s and whatever so it would only make sense. Maybe the 427. Anyways, um, so let's get uh, let's get farting around here and trying to get these wheels off. So there's the rear pinion in there, and it, like I said, it's offset to that side a little bit. So hopefully, I don't think that should cause me an issue. I think I should be okay with that. But anyways, that's I just noticed that as I was standing there. When I was in my smaller shop. Uh, and I had before I, even before I had my four post hoist in my smaller shop um, luckily I bought these big axle stands um, because I used to lift with the mercury here I used to lift the mercury up really high and wanted to get it off the ground on the stands so luckily I've got these big stands I've got the front jacked up and on the stands already so I'm just going to put the back on and, uh, and we'll get the tires off
holy moly, that's tight. I am definitely going to need all the ooga to get this thing off. I'm sure that this is not going to be easy. Or air pressure at all. Well, there we go. So I still haven't unfortunately got this shop sort of set up the way I want to. I did for a while when I had this office in the corner. Had uh, the airlines run around um, with outlets all around the shop. And uh, anyways, I've never put them back in since I took that office down. So dragging one line around. Ah! All right. You going to do this or what? You gonna ooga dooga? Is that on? No. Holy mother of Mary. Jump. successfully doing here is getting pretty dirty um, hopefully I can get this one off aha I got one don't do this at home Okay, well that was successful. I don't know what to do about the back ones, but... Oh, for Pete's sake! How am I gonna get that off now? Well, I was getting a little bit nervous about shaking and jiggling and wiggling on this wheel um, because people say that with the split rims that can come apart and and hurt you but I'll be darned if these are not split rims um, I've got one split rim on this whole truck uh, which is kind of a bummer because how do I find one wheel um, but anyways let me bring you in here and show you what I'm talking about so we come around to this side and this upper lip is much thicker. You can see the actual literal split in the rim. And there. So this rim is a split rim. The other one isn't. And the back ones also are not split rims. Um, it's hard to tell because you really you got to look more to the inside here. Um, but when I look all the way around the inside, those back rims, all four of them, are solid rims. So that solves part of my dilemma um, about getting tires, at least. I don't know how I'm going to find one, though. Um, anyways, if you have one, let me know. Um, but... I still got to get these darn things off. But I don't have to be too worried about beating on these to try and get them off. But of course, I don't want to wreck the, the rim. Right? So these, uh, these wheels, how they hold on, on your normal car, most of your cars, the Lug nuts, you guys probably know this, but your lug nuts center up the wheel on your cars and it centers it and plus there's a ring in the center that it sits on, but your the, the lug nuts are also cones. So on like that Skylark behind me, 
it doesn't sit on the center hub. It just uses the cone on the lug nuts to help center the wheel. Well, these, they only sit on that center hub. So it's going to be pretty tight. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. Because that hasn't budged at all. Well, I fortunately didn't have the camera turned on when I did that, but I jiggled and wiggled and just gave it a couple taps, actually, and it um, just popped off pretty easy. Whoa! Man, oh man. I mean, I'm a fairly big dude, but I don't want this rim falling on me. All right, how do we take this off? Anyone know? How does this drum come off? Maybe I gotta get in the middle here. I mean, this is a good sign that only three of the six bolts that hold this on are here. That's got to be a good sign, right? Well, so I've got three of the six bolts. I guess I'm going to have to deal with that. I'll just be gentle. Well, I've got two of the six bolts. Now I suspect I'm going to break the rest of them. Yeah. Oh, no, that one came out. Oh, I wonder, are they only that short? That'll be easy to deal with. Huh. Ooh. Man, oh, man. All right. Well, I mean, that's good, right? That's... Nothing wrong with that. That's just... <coughs> oh my God. I think I swallowed it. Hmm. It's interesting. I mean, this... Once you scrape all the crap off it, it looks fairly newish. I need a thingy. All right. Let's try and get this cotter pin out. Oh. Um, I'm, what in the, okay. Huh. Turn it by hand, no. Man. Yeah, right. So what size is this going to be? Bigger than that. I'm glad I bought a bunch. Well, luckily, no, nope, that's too big. There it is. Well, all right. So I'm glad I did that. I went to the shelf and the guy says, okay, these sockets are sold individually at good old Master Crafty Canadian Tire. And uh, that's our local sort of hardware store, everything sort of store up here, I guess. Same down in the U.S. would be like a Menards or, I don't know, something like that. Anyways, they sell everything. But they're, they used to be just like an auto parts hardware store, whatever. Anyway, so that's where, I mean, their tools are okay. They're not tool truck stuff, but they're okay. Anyway, so the guy said, how, what, which ones do you want? And I said, that whole row, which was four. And luckily, I got the right one. So these are three-quarter drive sockets. And uh, I don't know why, but I had a half-inch to three-quarter drive adapter. But <coughs> There. I mean, there's no need to clean those threads off because the nut coming off just cleans them for you. So we don't have to worry about that. Now, is this going to be filled with grease? It's going to, like, 
something that's all going to come out at me and be gross? Oh, yeah. I mean, this all looks fairly new. This crud, though, getting in that bearing makes me nervous, but I'm sure I could. Is this going to come off? Oh, look at that. Huh. That bearing's like... So someone was in here. For, I mean, the grease looks old, but I don't know if you can see that little focus. The bearing's actually fairly good. I might be able to clean that up and use it. Keep that safe. All right. This thing probably weighs as much as a small cart. What in the world now? I mean, what? Oh. All right. Let's see. Okay, we're just hung up on the brakes. There's probably a way to release these brakes. I bet. No, what does that do? That probably releases the brakes. Hmm. You guys aren't being any help today. Just shout it out. Like, I have no idea. Oh, okay. There we go. Oh, yummy. All right, so there's what we did. We just popped, so we popped that one spring off. So, I mean, that's all got to be good for you. Don't breathe that. Don't, don't breathe that in. Don't, that stuff's not good. So, other than being filled with horrible monsters. Um, man, oh man, look at all of, this is like a creepy movie. So that's a good song. I mean, I can just clean these up and honest to goodness, like there's no reason why I can't use these brakes for now anyways. I'll measure them up to make sure that the ones I can buy are the same as this, but I got to try and tackle the, um, the back wheels there, so uh, let's uh, try and do that. And it's almost dinner time. Okay, so you saw I was able to smack a wrench on the front wheels to try and get those ones undone. Unfortunately, I can't do that with this because I'm I'm so far in. Um, so I don't know. There's a lot of deflection in this, so. When I beat on this with a hammer, is it actually going to do anything? Yeah, right. Oh my God. Do you ever watch somebody do something and you know that it's just going to hurt? Oh my Lord. This was probably put on with one of those big giant three quarter inch impacts, so it's probably why I'm having so much trouble with it trying to get this thing off of here, but man, oh man. Well, like I said, it's almost dinner time, so I'm going to throw some penetrating fluid on this and uh, let it soak for a bit and maybe come back after some grub. So I don't know what your favorite flavor of penetrating fluid is. Well, that smells awful, but uh, I'm going to give this uh, PB Blaster a try and it says it's worked like a pro since 1957, so, and it even sprays upside down. Let's see. Well, certainly does. Oh, it's kind of got like a minty, fresh kind of diesel fuel, mm, dentist kind of smell. Done eating chicken fajitas. And uh, 
Hopefully I don't have any on my face. Let's uh, see what this uh, PB blaster stuff did. Well, sometimes you just got to resort to using the big red wrench. There's one. I was hoping the other ones would get nervous by now and just jump off. Five more to go. Oh, it's nice. It smells like um, burning mouse pee and poop. That's lovely. Hi, how's it going? You doing all right? I'm doing all right. It'd be better if these lug nuts come off. Ah! All right, we're getting there. All right, well, last one. Torch blew out on me again. That's always exciting. And people wonder why when doing a restoration of old stuff, they don't want to give a quote. Well, it's now taken me over half an hour to get 10 lug nuts off. All right. All right. Come on. Oh. No, come on. I was just thinking, what are the chances that this wheel's gonna come off? Slim to none. Jumping. All right, so, oh, that smells awful. Took, whoa. Oh, look at all the mouse poo. Oh, God. No wonder that smells awful. Well, took a, took a little bit of heat to uh, loosen this back one up, but she's off. So I bought one of those nifty... Uh, screw getter outer things from Eastwood um, that would probably just be really great right about now because I've got to take these big screws off but I didn't think about the fact that I went and then sacrificed my air hammer and welded it to my planishing hammer. Um, if you haven't seen that video I'll put the link up above but uh, yeah I made my own planishing hammer and welded my air hammer to it and haven't gone and bought another one, so I'm going to try the handheld one. Oh, that was easy.
His screws actually look fairly new. Ooh, that was easy too. All right, those came off. I don't exactly know what these do. That's making a whoosh. Oh, it smells lovely too. Yeah. Oh, what do I do with this? Pull the axle out? No. No, that drum's got to come off on its own. I don't have to pull the axle to pull the drum off. Do I? Somebody watching has got to know that I'm doing this all wrong. Because that's, that's the axle. I don't want to pull the axle out. Hmm. Ow, that's hot. Okay, well, let's put it back on. Oh, that's hot. So do I have to just beat the crap out of this drum? Like... Okay. I guess I have to beat the crap out of this drum? All right, so pulled the three screws or bolts or whatever you want to call them out, screws, I guess. Um, so this should be split here. And uh, I'm just gonna loosen off the shoes, hopefully. Um, hopefully I can get at the adjuster. I mean, I can't get in there to see anything. I'm just trying to feel around here. All right, so there it is. Sometimes you gotta know when to walk away. So it's the next day. Um, spent literally three hours beating and heating to try and get this drum off. Um, and I just eventually had to call it quits. It was late at night, was tired of panning on stuff and uh, knew that if I wanted to be able to function today and move, as it is, I'm already pretty sore and hard to move around and I'm sure you can all relate. Um, Anyways, so I thought, okay, I got to leave this alone and come back to it later. And I'm out here in the shop just going to do some other stuff today. Actually, I had planned on not doing this and thought, you know what? I'm going to grab the pry bar and just see. And it started to move. So let me see if I can. Look at that. So I just left it alone and here it comes. That's pretty exciting. There we go. Look at that. Oh my God, that's heavy. Man, oh man. So, those brakes are pretty soaked with stuff. I don't know if I can salvage them. I mean, I hope so. The pads are like new. Oh, we'll get this sprayed down. I don't think, I think all this crud on here is not really from me. I think it's over the years of the axle seal leaking because it's pretty wet around the axle seal here on the hub. So, but I think I'm just going to clean these up. And really, to be honest, the biggest thing about this, why I wanted to get this off, is I wanted to, I need to measure these shoes uh, because I can only get what I can find anyways. Maybe if I went to a big, big truck shop or something, uh, parts place, like up here it's traction. Um, maybe they could find me shoes for this. But through the parts stores, like Rock Auto and that, um, there's only one size, maybe two. <clears throat> anyways, there's a specific size of shoes for this. Um, 
So anyways, that's good. I mean, the wheel cylinders don't look like they're leaking. So that's good. The bottom one, I think the bottom one's just covered from this oil from the axle seal, but I'll clean all this up. So the drum's pretty caked with grease and crud. So that axle seal's been leaking for quite a while, so. Yeah, we'll try and clean that up. The biggest problem now is all these rims, except for one, one is a split rim. So I have to just try and find one rim. So I'm gonna try and reach out through social media and that and see if someone's got a, a school bus or um, a fire truck or something sitting out there. There's a local salvage yard, which I'll try to hit up and see if they've got something or some of the other ones, but I just need one rim. Um, the rest of them are pretty crusty, but that's all right. I mean, if I can, I should be able to clean them up. We'll put tubes in the tires and I think they've already got tubes in them anyways, but yeah, I, I'm gonna try and salvage these rims and salvage these axles. So that means the next step is gonna be dealing with the leaf springs. So now I gotta decide what motor I wanna put in this, whether it's gonna be a traditional small block Chevy or an LS based one. I've got a six liter uh, that was planned for the Suburban, but because I'm gonna sell that now because I got this, uh, that is up for grabs for this or whatever, but it needs cam bearings, um, which isn't that big of a deal, but so I don't know, we're gonna see. I'm gonna try and see what I wanna put in this. I'd honestly like to keep this truck as simple as possible. Um, if you know these old C50s and C10s, there's like five wires in the whole truck and it's running. I mean, even the, the wires for the taillights is like trailer wiring. Um, so they're so simple and I'd really like to keep it that way. I'd like to keep it completely simple. Now, on the flip side, I do also have an old Edelbrock uh, fuel injection setup that I can try and throw on that small block and then there's fuel injection on it. So we'll see. Um, so that's a decision for later. I'm rambling a bit. Anyway, so that's next. Try to figure out what engine I'm gonna put in this, put the engine in. Then I'm gonna deal with the leaf springs and figure out what I'm gonna do for suspension. I'd like to do air ride in this truck. Um, so in the back, that'll mean that probably what I'll end up having to do is do some type of a four link setup and sort of same thing in the front. Um, but what I may try and do is replicate the old style Chevy trailing arm suspension for the back. Um, so I'll make my own trailing arms for that, do a, a panhard rod or whatever you wanna call it, a track bar. Um, so that's probably what I'm gonna try and do in the back of this thing, in the front, because it, again, it's a straight axle in the front. Um, we'll see, I'll probably try and mimic some of the newer trucks the way they've got their front suspension set up. But either way, um, I'd like to run bags in this and uh, yeah, just make it a pretty cool truck. So thanks for tagging along. Please subscribe to the channel and uh, hope to see you again.